So first of all, a bit about Map Action. This is our standard intro slide, which I rather like the idea of, you know, a lonely man sitting in a tent at his laptop. It's not always like this for Map Action, but I think it gives you an idea that you know, what we do is to go out as a humanitarian charity in response to humanitarian disasters of various kinds, so be that earthquakes or floods or, or conflict or whatever, um, and provide a logistics function of mapping and information management. Now, having said that, clearly we don't do that now, uh, and the current crisis is an issue for us in terms of constraining what we're, what we're doing. Uh, we're doing quite a lot remotely. We've sort of refocused and reframed, um, but that's a bit of a different story. Um, and in terms of scale, we, we dealt with around 102 emergency responses. So that's a few a year for the last 18 or so years. But we also do a lot of preparedness work. We go out and help uh, local organizations, regional, regional and national organizations to build their own capacity uh, as a means of passing on our own, um, our own expertise that we've gathered over the years. We do preparedness, we do training. Uh, we did a, a huge number of training sessions last year, for example, largely in, in Central Asia and in, and in Asia. We go to simulations like anything else, practice makes perfect. So we do a lot of work you know, simulating earthquake response scenarios. And we do remote support, particularly at the moment, we provide maps for people. So in all this work, we use both Esri and uh, other tools, principally QGIS, obviously a lot of other software, but you know, we're talking about desktop mapping software here principally. And these are very much used in parallel and, and we're increasingly, you know, we've taken a decision that, um, a strategic decision that we don't want to be locked into any one um, partner. We want to be what we like to think of as bilingual in our software approach so that we always have the flexibility to work with whatever tools are best suited to the, to the case in hand. Now on emergency scenarios, that's almost always um, ArcGIS and probably ArcPro in due course um, for training, for remote support, for um, preparedness, it's almost always QGIS. Um, and particularly the, the, the main major point of this is, is you know, partly to make the most of our own skills, but, but principally so that we can work with other partners who may not ac have access uh, or want to work with licensed products. Um, and so we don't want to be in a situation where, um, where we've produced a whole lot of maps in, in ArcGIS. We've been responding to an earthquake for two weeks. We want to hand over and then we find you know, nobody that we're handing over to has the ability to use Arc. Um, so, when we came across this S layer um, plugin, which has been in the in the offing for a couple of years, I guess now, we got quite excited because uh, you know this this seemed to, to us like a major breakthrough in terms of being able to work with other people and give us flexibility. And I think so far our hopes have been realised. Um, so North Road are the uh, are the company that's that's come up with it. So it's demo time um, and uh, I'm sure this will be fine. Um, let's find out. So what we have here is ARC on the um, left-hand side, QGIS on the right-hand side. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just run through a couple of um, not, not totally random scenarios and that I have made sure that everything vaguely works before but equally I've not um, you know I've not made up projects for this exercise these are actual maps that are that um, map action have been working with um, so let's open one of them up uh, let's start with um, this is a mission that I was involved in uh, late last year in um, in Djibouti where there was flooding and um, flooding in Djibouti city, not a usual event in, in, in Djibouti. So uh, there was, although it was relatively light in terms of the actual flooding, the impact was very high. So we went out and made, made a bunch of maps. So here's our map in, um, in ARC on the left-hand side. Um, uh, obviously, you know, we're not concerned with the detail here, but just to show you that this is a, a map with, you know, uh, a dozen or so layers, I guess. 
much showing the extent of flooding in the areas affected, which is a very common kind of product. So what can we do in, in QGIS with this? Well, what we can do is we can navigate to it. Um, you, can, you can actually drag, drag, drag and drop, but I'm gonna navigate to it hopefully in here and find it in uh, Djibouti. MA006, where are we? MA008. So if I double click on it in, in QGIS, having installed the plugin, obviously, and just to, to be clear, um, the Estla is a QGIS plugin. It's at the moment it's licensed, so you have to, to pay for it. I'll come on to, to that at the end of the talk. Uh, but it is a QGIS plugin. And um, it pops up and says, um, uh, it looks like I've got nothing, but I've got some layers on the left hand side here. I've got a message at the top which says, okay, there are a few things that couldn't be converted. You probably can't read this. So it's talking about legend group titles. So these are things which effectively are things which are supported by ARC, but are not supported in QGIS. So it's just giving you a heads up that you know, not everything will have come through, but let's see what we have got. So if I go to QGIS and, and zoom in, uh, Okay, so we have got quite a lot actually. Um, and although it's not an exact representation, I hope you can see that actually, you know, we've got the bulk of our map there. Um, and literally all we've done is to open it up in, in QGIS. So that to me, if nothing else, is quite an exciting thing. Um, what is uh, more exciting uh, is What's less exciting is that my screen share is, is uh, obscuring my menu, so I'm just gonna have to move this. Um, what is even more exciting is that if we go to the page layout tool, uh, if we wait a little while, we should find we've also got a, a page layout which has come across as well. Um, and there we are. Um, let's make this full screen so you can have a good look at it. Um, it's not um, perfect. Let me uh, make it a bit bigger. Um, but, and it's not an exact representation of what was there. There are some layers I think turned on here that actually weren't turned, turned on in the original. But what we do have is all the frames in place. The legend has gone a bit bananas. Uh, there were some errors about the legend. So I think my course of action here probably is to delete the legend and create a new one. Um, but we've, we've pretty much got the bones of a, I mean, more than the bones of a map here, actually. And, um, and I think if, uh, if I was doing this, I'd be pretty pleased that maybe in half an hour or so, I could knock this into shape and, uh, and get it published in QGIS as a pretty good looking project. So let's try another one just to um, demonstrate that wasn't a, a fluke. Uh, go back to ARC and let's look at um, 15, I think is the next one on my list. So this is a pretty simple one, actually. Uh, I'm going to run through these relatively quickly because uh, I've got a few more, a few other things to, to show you. Um, you can see this is just a, you know, I think this is done for a report. So it's not tended to be detailed. It's just a very quick overview map. Uh, let's find this in QGIS and see if we can, um, I'm going to just create a new project and um, see what this does. Takes a little while to, to run through all the gubbins. This one was in French. And there we are. We've got a few more warnings again. Um, Again, it's complaining about legend items and also VB script. So it's not going to, it's not going to convert VB script um, uh, uh, in um, label expressions, for example, in um, uh, in ARC into into something that QGIS can use. But again, we should have a um, a layout here. And here's our layout. We've got an overview map, an inset map. We've got a legend that to me looks uh, really quite nice. Oops. Um, and there's not really too much that, that's wrong with that, I would say. So 
happy with that one. Uh, let's move on and go to um, Indonesia, which is um, where I was also involved a couple of years ago. Um, this one was, I don't know if you remember, 2018, there was an earthquake in Sulawesi, which also led to, um, uh, let's uh, make that a bit bigger, uh, which also led to some, um, uh, a tsunami and some liquefaction. It was a sort of triple whammy of disasters. So we sent a team out to, to look at that. Uh, now this is a bit more complicated. It's got a couple of maps. It's got another inset map. It's got a legend here. Let's see how QGIS can handle that or rather s -Layer can handle that. Um, Indonesia. And 22. Again, we get some warnings. Uh, again, the legend one. Um, let's see when we zoom to the correct extent what we get. And uh, yeah, that looks uh, like pretty much like the right hand map to a large extent. Again, let's look at the print layout. Uh, layouts, page layout. Uh, again, I think I'm pretty happy with that rendering. Let's get out to a decent size. Um, we've got our three maps there. We've got the layers pretty nicely rendered. Um, we've got probably a bit of jiggery pokery in the uh, legend to deal with, but most of the stuff is there. We've got our map action logos up at the top, I think, um, and also another logo, the AHA Center that we were dealing with. So again, looking good. Um, so finally, um, let's look at one more quickly. Uh, 42. And I'm going to do this straight away here as well, not to take too much time. This one uses a bit of hex grids to count the number of buildings affected. Uh, within the tsunami, tsunami extent. Uh, and if we zoom in here, we'll see we've got pretty much the same thing. Bit of an issue with the uh, size of the uh, font for these numbers here, they're, they're overrunning the circles that they're in, but that should be easily fixed. Um, and we've got an open street map base map. We've not had to do anything with that. That's just come straight through. Uh, so that's rather nice. And if we look at our page layout, um, we've got a pretty good rendering here as well, I would say. So again, a bit of tweaking, some padding on the um, on these boxes, I think. And um, other than that, we're I think we're in quite good shape. So you know, this this all makes us feel very very comfortable, to be honest, because this is exactly what what it is that we're needing to do. Uh, so just to show you a couple of other things, there is more to uh, S layer than, than that. Um, I'm going to start a new, oops, start a new project here. Um, S layer will handle a whole bunch of other uh, arc artifacts. So for example, layer files, um, we can drag and drop a layer file from Explorer into QGIS. And again, it doesn't really get the extent, but if we zoom to the layer, we just get our layer file. Um, and there's another one. Um, I think that will work. Let's see. We've got this is again, we're in Djibouti. This is our flooding in Djibouti. Um, so, you know, if we've got individual layer files, we can just drag them across and, um, and, and we're done. And there's, there's a whole load of drag and drop functionality. Uh, I think we can also drag and drop uh, layers from Arc now. So if we zoom to the layer. So yeah, I mean, we can literally just drop and drag and drop layers from Arc into, into QGIS. So you know, working side by side, you may or may not have Arc installed, but if you have working side by side, we can just pick and choose, cherry pick the layers we want to bring across. Um, 
you know if we if we want to do a different map but using the same layers we can just we can just uh, drop drop them over um, so I think I've got about five minutes so what else can I show you well uh, I'm going to focus on Q just a bit now um, QGIS has a processing toolbox, which probably most of you will be aware of, but this is where all the QGIS and other processes sit. Um, and you'll see that down at the bottom, we've got an um, S layer uh, set of tools here, which has been added. And within that, there are a whole set of tools. Effectively, I think all the tools which, which QGIS has been using and what I've been showing you before, uh, which allow you to do these things in a in a process driven manager uh, manner manner excuse me um, so for example you, you know you could say okay I want to convert a, a layer file uh, from um, uh, from a layer to a QML file and here it is in the familiar QGIS processing interface you can put in your parameters here you can uh, uh, you can uh, um, have it running as a batch process, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Some of these things, I don't really know what they are, but some, some of you may know. Um, the one I was going to demonstrate was just converting a style. Um, this is something we had to do the other day. And um, to be honest, I forgot that um, QG, uh, the S layer could do it, so I, I, I did it semi manually, but now I worked it out. It's um, reasonably easy to do. So we have a set of humanitarian icons. These are produced by um, OCHO, which is the uh, UN Agency for Humanitarian Assistance. Um, and basically they're a set of icons to show the kind of things that happen in, in humanitarian emergencies. So we can open that up, we can um, save it to a file, and we can say humanitarian icons. XML. Um, so when we run this, uh, okay, it looks a bit scary in red because it gives us a whole bunch of errors. But if we look at the er errors, what it's saying is for however many 300 odd icons, actually marker halos are not supported by QGIS, which is true. Um, Arc supports a, a halo around a font, QGIS doesn't. Um, so hey ho or halo. Um, can't do much about that, but what we can do is import this style. Uh, rather, uh, I'm going to just delete the the last ones before I start. Um, so we should have done that before, um, and then we can delete all these, and then we can import the the uh, the new icons, and they will come in as QGIS styles. So. Again, really nice in terms of being able to uh, move seamlessly between the two, or at least from um, from QGIS to ARC, uh, import from file. Let's minus kill that. And here, are, here are all the styles. Uh, you know, these are the standard things that we use, mobile phone, monitor, um, you know, power not affected, select all, import, and in they come. Incidentally, I found a way around the halo thing by using the draw effects, which seem to work very nicely. So it is possible, it's just not possible in exactly the same way. So we should, in due course, get um, get a bunch of about 300, 300 styles here. Uh, there we go. So we've now got these styles available to use in QGIS. So again, fantastic for interoperability and just being able to keep keep everything in line and also keep QGIS. You know, we do want QGIS to be available in all, you know, for, even from our, our emergencies, and this is all part of that. So um, I think that's pretty much the end of what I wanted to say demo wise. Let me just go back to my slides and do a couple of wrap ups. So thank you everybody for keeping your fingers firmly crossed. That seemed to do the trick. Um, 
there are a few things I came across in putting together this demo. I mean, there are some obvious things which, which um, you know, it's easy to forget about. So fonts, you know, if you have fonts which are being used in Arc, you need them to be available to the QGIS version. Um, and the, those OCHA fonts, the humanitarian icon fonts, it, it was an example. Um, there is, you know, it's all documented on the North Road site as to what it does and what it doesn't do. But there are things that it, it, it doesn't like so much. There are some legend items that it doesn't like. It doesn't like VB script. Um, I mean, North Road have been, you know, they're working actively on this and, and um, one minute something is not working and then the next version suddenly it is. So it's very much uh, an active development project, um, which is great. So they are aware of issues and, and obviously flagging them up in the in the error messages. Um, one thing which I did find was that, um, you know, it's a, call it a bug or call it a feature. I, if you have Inkscape in, installed, you can point Slayer at Inkscape and Inkscape will convert EMFs to SVGs. So um, if you have EMFs in your source document, which on one of them I did, I need, it came up with an error and said it couldn't convert it because I didn't have Inkscape. So I put Inkscape in and hey presto, that all worked. Um, another kind of gotcha, which is more about Arc and Excel, is that if you don't have Excel, um, if you have Arc installed but not Excel, and Arc is using Excel documents, it won't be very happy. But what you can do is install the Microsoft Access Database Engine Redistributable, which fixes it and which is free. So again, just, just a couple of tips really. Um, so what are we doing? Well, uh, uh, I'm gonna have to ask you to get it to a close because otherwise there'll be no space for questions. Yep, sure. Uh, just an example of what we did in Libya, left-hand side, Esri Arc Products, right-hand side, QGIS. So we used it in anger to hand over our work in Libya, which was uh, earlier this year. Uh, very happy with the results. And we learned a lot from that process. Um, North Road are also very busy updating QGIS when they find things that um, uh, the ARC doesn't handle. They say, oh, well, maybe QGIS could do it after all. And then they go and fix QGIS. So you get a load of QGIS fixes out of the, out of the box. So that's the icing on the cake. Um, some of which are, uh, are really great. Some of which are a bit more esoteric. Uh, and that's what's next, what's coming up. That's on the North Road site. So have a look at that if you want to know. And I will skim past that side slide and finish there. So thank you very much. Okay, so um, thank you very much indeed, Anthony. Um, what I want, I'm going to try and get a few questions in before we have to finish. Um, if so, please bear with me if I miss out your question. First question I've got was, does this work with ArcGIS Pro? Yeah, I, I thought that question would come up. So I asked North Road and the answer is no. I mean, it's an ArcGIS product, um, but right. there is a, they are working on it and it's a, um, it, it's in their plan for, for this year. So okay. keep your eyes open, I would say, is the answer to that one. But yeah, very, um, very much active development. I would, there's a question, is there a report provided by SLYR that um, shows what hasn't been converted correctly? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you certainly get the um, error messages. Um, sorry, I should have a QGIS. Did I close QGIS? Um, so um, you certainly get an error message pop up. So uh, you should, I think, get a, a login, a message in the box here, but it doesn't look like you're getting one, but you do get a pop up. So, you know, you can copy and paste what's in the pop up. Um, and um, sorry, what, you, yeah, what, I, what I didn't also say, which is important, um, which reminds me is that there is an open source version of some of this uh, functionality, not necessarily the whole package, but some of this functionality coming later in June. So, you know, keep an eye on North Road for that. They're very committed to making it open source or at least parts of it as soon as they can. And um, uh, so, you know, you, you should be able to use at least part of it later, later this month. Okay. That answers a question that was there. What, so thank you for beating me to this. Um, 
somebody said, does it support layer files in the newer ArcGIS Online or is it just the old ArcMap? And I think that probably is the same as the ArcGIS Pro. I think that's the case, but um, uh, I would advise you to check with North Road about that. Right. Um, somebody else asked, just to double check, I'm assuming that all the information can be saved in QGIS and amended. What's the compatibility like if you amend the um, information and project in QGIS and then take back to Esri? You can't save it as a, once it's in QGIS, it's a QGIS project. So it's a, it's a one-way process. Um, right. Uh, I'm, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, until, I mean, this is an interesting question, which has come up in, in map action discussions. Can we go the other way? Well, you know, it's, it's in, in effect, what QGIS has done under the, or North Road have done on behalf of the, um, uh, of, uh, of, of QGIS is to say, we're going to give QGIS the ability to read and import ARC artifacts. If, if, if Esri wanted to do the same in the other direction, that would be fantastic. But um, I, I, I would say it's unlikely, but who knows? Okay, and a couple of people have asked what version of QGIS you need for this. But yeah, that's another good question. And thanks. So that's something I should have mentioned. I am using the bleeding edge uh, dev version of QGIS. I mean, it will work with earlier versions of QGIS, but basically North Road is so busy as in adding features to QGIS, which make the whole process better, that the later version of QGIS you use the better. So QGIS um, 3.14 is due out this month, and that will contain all the stuff that I've been using here. So uh, the, the advice is if you can, uh, use the very latest version of QGIS as for conversions. I mean, what you may want to do if you're using a long-term release, for example, is use this for conversions and with S layer, but um, go back to, you know, once you've, you've saved a project, it should say this with no guarantees, but you should be able to open it in the long-term release version of QGIS. So yeah, bleeding edge version of QGIS if, if possible. Um, and I've got a question here, which may be the last one from Till Adams. He says, did you think about how to support the tool, especially once it's open source? If every, Esri changed their formats, you have to go off after they, we had this prob, something like this um, with an art map to map server converter ages ago um, and had to give up when Esri switched from ArcGIS yeah. 8 to 9. That's always a challenge, I think, when you're, when you're putting together um, converters, which, you know, are not, you know, this hasn't been developed by Esri. This has been developed by North Road by reverse engineering Esri. So that's an issue for North Road, I think. I mean, from our point of view, as long as it works, it's great, and we'll go on using it. And um, we, but we recognize that there's no guarantees long term. Um, so, so we just have to, to hope that you know, as we do make changes, then North Road are able to keep up with those. And just to be clear, North Road's intention is to make part of S layer um, open free, a free plugin for QGIS. Yeah, absolutely. So have a look at their website and get the latest. Um, there's some sort of funding, you know, they made a, a commitment that if they got a certain amount of funding, they would do that within six months. And they're, you know, I know they've I've been in touch with our mayor, they're very committed to that. So um, yeah, keep an eye okay. on their website and contact them if you want more information. So I think it is worth just saying this to a number of people who've been asking this question, you know, um, the guys at North Road have to put food on the table and pay their mortgages and somehow somebody has to fund them to do this development work and keep doing this development work and the way they're doing it is by a combination of selling licenses until they've sold enough to fund the costs of doing this and then they're going to make most of it free and I think that's a pretty good model that we should encourage rather than perhaps criticize. Anyway, I'm and, going and, to sorry, Steve, just just to say that to add to that, and they gave Map Action a pretty nice discount as well for the software. So we we thank right. them for that. Right. Um, 